We live in a dream and they ain't come back, boy. Oh no. Yo, Cage, we are Scotty and Mike. I ain't tripping on the hater, cause I'm at they neck. So pass the weed to my niggas a wreck. I'm a king motherfucker like Joffy Joe. Rest of them fell off like Sloppy Joe. When I put my first tour, rock the show. Rock the and show. Hardy, true religion, rock the clothes. Rock the clothes. And that's how we do. Sin City LV, nigga 702. We hit haters, stop wondering how I'm on a roll. You motherfuckers can't stop me now. Motherfuckers can't stop me. I murder bars, rest of them sticker rappers spitting candy bars. In this rap shit, I do my thing. Left jab on the game like Club like Lane. Love Lane. Who won't run with me? I'm a brick in a booth. Y'all have to keep. They can't rep me. So this was a really cut back roll in that. Now I've got it out to where it's kind of normal. I changed out the capacitor and we're going to work with that. But what I wanted to show you was, are capacitors important? And yes, they are. They're huge. They're huge. Um, in the operation of your machine. I put a... Let me get this tack down. I just slammed a... Uh, what is this? This is a... 400 I believe it's a 470 UF 16 volt so I'm going to make sure I'm not at 16 volts because this thing will pop in my face boom like a little firecracker a little fat cat so you got to be careful 16 volts is the max on this but I installed it on here to show you this is 470 UF so technically between 22 and 47 is usually standard right I put a 470 on here to show you what it does to the machine. No matter what, you know, I'm at uh, 8 volts right now. So I'm going to be careful with this because it's not cool. It is dangerous. But, okay, now pay attention to what happens here. And it doesn't matter. You can see the contact screw. You can see my gap there. It's about a, uh, I'd say about a nickel, both, bottom and front, normal setup. Capacitor's different. It's the only thing. Now look how this operates. No matter what. It, it's a chunky... And it doesn't matter. Let, let's adjust the uh, contact screw. Until it gets thinner and it'll just stick. The magnet. But let's go all the way to the top. It doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? You see how it acts? It, it's a, the strangest thing in the world, this hit. You, you couldn't do nothing with that. So, a capacitor has huge, huge impact on the way that your machine runs. So you guys dick around with it a little bit, you know? Don't, don't keep to industry standards. What I'm learning, you know, um, and I'm, I'm talking to my buddy, you know, hey, I'm going to slap some 47s on here, and I'm going to line with those. And I'm going to see what it is, because technically what you read and what you hear and scientifically and everything, yeah, when you drop the, the uh, UF ratings, it's going to speed up your machine. But why do you have to have such a fast machine? You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go through and, and try a whole bunch of different things. And I wish that I had a huge canvas to work on, but I don't, you know, and um, I'm running out of body space. But... Uh, so, you know, this video is just for people that don't think that capacitors are of any importance on your machine. Totally. If your machine's not running correctly, mess around with some capacitors. Make a couple of them. Make a 22, a 23, a 24, a 25. Mess with the voltage. Um, 100's way too much. You know, it's, it's like a little battery cell. You know, it's got liquid inside and like this, this material like a battery would inside. And the electrons, protons, and neutrons go back and forth inside this thing, back and forth, you know and uh, it stores that electrical energy. So, if your machine's not running right, or it's stopped, or anything like that, look at your contacts. Make sure that the wires aren't bent and crinkled up. Uh, make sure that your coils don't have gaps. That's a huge thing. You start having co uh, gaps in your coils, especially on good machines, the, uh, the electromagnetic field's not gonna be proper. Y you know, these are coils from, um, Superior, but I found out that Superior, you know, they do their own thing. But, but you know, I've twisted these up, and these are actually good coils, man. You know, you can tell that they're, they're really tight in here. There's a couple of gaps on the side, but, I mean, look how tight these are. It's the red wire coil. 
um, copper. So they, they run pretty well, man. So, okay, so I'm just going to be changing out a quick cap on one of my machines. I uh, got some heat shrink real, real quick. Cut that out, make it look nice and pro. Um, I'm just using a lighter right now. But uh, basically what you really want to use is like a, a heat gun, you know. Because if you start doing colored ones like white, you're going to see the, the black film on that. You don't want that. One little bit more professional than that. And this gets too up close and personal. So you'll melt it actually and you'll defeat the purpose. It'll start bubbling. But uh, as you can see, it goes on pretty nice. You know, kind of chew the end a little bit. Make it nice and nice and neat. See that little bump? And this, this means that it's the positive side going this way. This is the negative side, positive side. You know what I'm saying? Um, and those would be the little indicators, the little arrows that come on your caps. Okay, so like this. You've got the dent and then you've got the arrows going up towards the positive. Um, so, this, this would be rolling. Uh, this dent right here would be towards the rear binding post here. This is the rear binding post terminal. And this will be the front binding post. Obviously, it's too short, so I've got to make an extension with some copper wire, solder that to the end, and uh, make it a little bit longer. And I'll do some measurements on the frame. And it's quite easy to do it. You just take your frame, and you go to the backward spot. Man, I, got, I actually got room. So my cap's going to sit up in here, and I'm going to bend it down here and bend it upwards. So it's kind of heading out of the way and make it just look uh, professional. So let's go ahead and do that. Got a little bit of soldering to do, which I don't have any soldering lugs. Soldering lugs are the flat ones that go to the end. I just have these. And you don't want to use these because they have that, you know, that's a lot of bulk. And you want it as flat as possible so that you can uh, get that the contacts up close especially the front contact post you don't want this in the way because then your screw will be way out here you know what I'm saying and the, the whole offset and spring and armature bar assembly would be off your contact screw would be way out here missing the coils and the, your electromagnetic field so I'll let me go ahead and flatten this out after I solder it and then uh, I'll show you so right now I don't have the proper diameter for shrink tubing that would go over this little tiny wire I have a thicker piece I'll use it anyways I'm gonna use a clear one go ahead and mark um, do some soldering right up in here so I'll go ahead and mark and cut that cut a couple of pieces off there just to, um, what that does is prevent your grounding and your shortages you don't want your wire touching the frame on that at all. So, make a little indentation and cut it. This is the simple part, you know, even on the clip cords. You know, it looks all nicely wrapped up and neat. All it is is shrink tubing, man. It's pretty cheap stuff. I got this at Radio Shack, so it wasn't that cheap. Up here in Reno, they don't have anything. That's why I miss home, you know. I gotta get back to San Jose because they don't have anything out here, dude, that I need. You know, and I don't want to order anything online right now. Really can't. But, uh, you know, it's for looks, but primarily in the technicalities of it is is that this prevents any arcing and the stopping of uh, it touching your frame and shorting you out. Because if this touch touches, right, Tosselo, if it touches, it's going to short out. Huh? Yeah. So, tell, tell the guys that you went to the dentist today. I been with the huh? dentist. You can what happened? Show them. What happened? You're dehydrated up here, too. It's real dry climate. You need to drink some more water, blah, blah. What happened? What happened? White hair got right here. What happened there? I get it. Let me see. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. That's hega bad. Sodas and candy. Yeah, Mommy me and me you. and me are bad too. Me and me and me are good. Her good. Her days 
Yay, yay, why? I, I, I good boy too, daddy. You're a good boy too. Why you always say that when we're on camera? You're a good boy. Because I good boy. You are a good boy. I love you, daddy. Love you too. You got that tattoo. You, you draw, don't you? You like, you want, you like the tattoos? Yeah, I like the tattoos. Daddy, have an alien. Why you draw the alien? Why did I draw an alien? Yeah. I don't know. I like aliens. What? what here. Yeah. This is an alien. It's an alien. No, this one. This is an alien. Mm -hmm. What right here? I know. I see it. Hold on. That's Let me do this alien. for you guys, okay? So right now I'm just I'm shrinking this around the tube as much or the uh, wire as much as possible. Um, a heat gun is gonna work a lot better. Maybe a blow dryer. I haven't tried a blow dryer yet. Um, I really have too much crap on my table right now. I'd rather be in a shop environment making really professional stuff, which I cannot wait for, man. But basically, like I said, this is going to prevent your shortages, your arcing and sparking. Um, so let me go ahead and solder some stuff, and then I'll, I'll show you. If it, you know, I'll be back. So basically, after you solder on, you're going to have those two key points where the contacts are. Screws go in here, washers, shoulder washer, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? And... Um, you can get away with this metal bending it a couple of good times without it snapping. So you can contort that to match your frame. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we'll do that in a second. What you want to do when you get completed with that, I just clamp these down. Uh, the solder logs are flat and those are a lot better, but I don't have those. These are the only clamps that I have right now, um, joints. Is you want to take a little file and this is when you're going to file your stuff. You know, this is when you're going to clean your contacts. And uh, just take a little file or sander. And that's what I want to do is just file these for better connection. You know what I mean? Um, make those as flush as possible. These are copper. I don't know. They're plated um, some sort of aluminum alloy. But copper is underneath, so that's actually cool. I don't know why they don't just leave them copper. But I'll show you in a minute. The solder might be a little uneven. Get that as flat as possible because that's important for contact and con continuity um, so yeah check it out it's copper let's get a good angle on that yeah there you go cool so you do that to both ends um, and this is where you're gonna check your machine on and spiff it up a little bit this is called fine tuning the tuning of a machine is quite simple it's just a couple of little uh, gaps and armature bar, you know, your spring tension, your throw, stuff like that. But uh, this is fine tuning, okay? Let's say these contact points and my terminals to my coils. You know, I want good contact, so conductivity. Want a properly running smooth machine, smooth. But be careful with your, your coil wires because those are flimsy. Copper is a lot more flimsy than that wire coming out of the cap. So at this point, I'm going to take the top of my coils too. Any, any little uh, debris that we have on there, any uh, carbon or anything build up, just barely touch that because these will file down. This is how you adjust your, your, uh, your coils. Shim washer or file down. Same with the rear deck. If it's ramped, you know, you, do, you want to shave that down. My boy was showing me his machine, and he's got a uh, angled, ramp, a ramped rear deck, so he's going to have to shave that down to where he likes it. Um, so that's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this back to its original, and I'm going to adjust my, uh, my coils at this point and check it out and see whatever... I want to get the wires behind the coils pinned to the frame as best as possible. So loosen that up. You want to be a tattoo artist, Tosselo? Yeah. You do? Then why don't you go draw something for me? Okay. Let me see your portfolio. Where's your portfolio at, Tosselo? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. You better make one or I'm not going to hire you. Okay. 
Okay. I need paper. You need paper? Yeah. Okay, don't use that. That's my W-2s. All right. So I just loosened this up just a tiny bit, and uh, we're going to go ahead and make placement. Now, remember, the important part is knowing what part is positive and negative, right? So we have a positive and a negative terminal. Um, I might be asked backwards, but the coils need to be round, uh, wound the same way. Um, usually it's counterclockwise, and I've, I'd have to recheck. I'm trying to think. I think, though, the rear binding post is positive, uh, and then the negative is up here. So if that's the case, then uh, I want it flowing just like that. Okay. Because that going up, where the dent is, that's negative. Where the dent is not, that's positive. So, eh, I think I'm asked backwards. Hold on. Yeah, I'm backwards. Where the dent is, that's positive, and vice versa, it's negative. Obviously, that would make sense. Anyways, the dent, where it is, goes to the rear. That goes to the rear coil, or your rear terminal right here. And I'll get you those specs. I'm, I might be a little backwards on um, which one's positive and negative, but it has to do with proper flow of, of the uh, electromagnetic field and neutrons, protons, isotopes, isosceles. So I'm going to go ahead and bend that to my liking. Get that stationary. Boom. Bada bing there. And what I want to do to get that stationary is once I get that pinned, once I get that pin back there behind uh, where I had it, once I get it stationary where I want it, I'm going to lock this down because it's going to help me when I'm bending these, uh, these wires to match my frame so it's up out of the way and it doesn't get involved with your armature bar or your swing or the full operation of, of your machine, your tattoo gun. So, not too tight at this point, just clamp it down. So what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? Tighten it down. Why? Because it makes it better. Oh yeah, because you want to make it better? Mm -hmm. That's cool, you make it better. And at this point, when I do lock that in place down there now, it's going to be easier for me to put my binding post screws on. Dad, I have some cello because it's like... No, because you just got back from the dentist. Oh, yeah. Can't have anything right now. Why? I can't eat food. Not yet. Oh, yeah, because I can't eat food. Because nope. my teeth. Yep. My teeth are rotten. <laughs> teeth aren't rotten, but they have cavities. Yeah, them have cavities. And here's... Your teeth have cavities, too. Her teeth have cavities. All right, go watch cartoons, B. Okay. Good boy, Tosselo. Hey, go watch cartoons, and then I'll let you know when you can eat, okay? <laughs> so let me get that affixed on there. You guys know how to do that. It's just going to take, it's a waste of video. So uh, in time, I'll just go ahead and show you that when it's done. When you're tightening up the rear binding post, um, you see this little hole right here? That's where your um, clip cord goes into. Well, a lot of the times you want to try to grab onto that while you're tightening this, and then that just spins. You don't want to do that because it, your wires can get bound up and wrap and snap. You don't want to snap the coils because they'll be done at that point. I mean, solder won't even really do any justice on that. So uh, best thing to do is go ahead and position it when it's loose, and then right where you want it, stick a needle bar, chop the tip off or whatever. Needle bars come handy for a lot of different purposes um, stick the needle bar in there so you have like a tensioner where the fulcrum point is and then at that point you can go ahead and tighten as much as you want without it spinning on you um, and that's a cool little little trick there a convenient little uh, tip for you and you know you just uh, stick it in there and hold it in place wherever I want it and it's really tight. And the bar didn't go anywhere. And you just pull it out and you're, you're good to go. It's real tight. 
Awesome. Awesomeness. Now, let's go ahead and put my uh, spring setup back on. I don't know if I like this spring setup. I was thinking about sticking a, um, a yoke on there and seeing if that really adds the power. 50-50%, um, 50, 50 going out, 50 coming back in. But if you add the a yoke, then it, it's 100 each, which would equal the 200. So I don't know if that would actually be the case or, or what. But I'm going to set my gap here. A little bit hanging over right about there tighten it down by hand I know you guys can't see me can you um, kind of line it up there tighten it by hand get the measurements in the back from the rear deck from the rear deck to the piece of that coil right there the end of the coil you just want to be overlapping a little bit, but then, you know, on certain machines it's a little different, but technically, that's what you want. Just a little overlap like this. You want it you want it hanging just a little bit over the back. You know what I got? I'm talking about the rear coil, actual coil top. You want that distance right there with your arm bar. Just a little bit out there. And adjusting that is adjusting the tension of the rear spring as well and the throw like the diving board we got into okay and uh, you make make sure that everything's lined up right here in this area you know look down the like the side of a weapon okay equal distance on each side if this was a sight on a firearm this right there would take out your target. That would have taken out your target. Take a puppy. It's real cold outside too. Yeah, heck cold for dinosaurs. For dinosaurs, we need to go back to San Jose, don't we? Yeah. You wanna go back the home? Dinosaurs will get, will We're done with Reno, aren't we? Yeah. We don't like it here, do we? No. I don't like it. I like it on your house. You mean our house? Your house is my house, Baba. All right, this is gonna be the moment of truth. After you just change the whole capacitor and everything else, let's make sure that moment of truth. Adjust my throw real quick. Cinch that down. Make sure everything's tight. Okay, let's see. Oh yes, we have power. Really quiet. There it goes. Voltage is kind of high. I do it on purpose. I want to out there. That's why. I gotta. Tighten down my uh, say right about as flush as possible with that. Reduce and minimize spark and the smoother operation and sound of your machine. I guess this would get back into machine tuning technicalities, and it's really just about a capacitor. And I'm just going for a test. Make sure everything's good there. Right about there. Tighten it up pretty good. Not too tight. You'll bust those washers right out of there, the shoulder washers. And see, by the sound of that, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and adjust my rear. Daddy, that's cool. Sorry if you guys don't like the rap or anything like that. Uh, I produce music as well, so I'm like a jack of all of them. So, um, <clears throat> back in the day, gangster shit, you know, I, I don't discriminate, man. I produce music, I produce art. I, uh, you know, don't hate me because of my music. You'll hear some rock stuff, you'll hear some rap rock that I've invented. You know, you'll hear a lot of stuff, so just stay tuned. <laughs>
Diddy on top, cop Dom Rose and let them bottles pop. We live in a dream and they ain't come back, boy. Oh no, yo, Cage, we are Scotty and Mike. I ain't tripping on the hater, cause I'm at they nest. Yo, pass the weed till my niggas are wreck. I'm a king motherfucker like Joppy Joe. Rest up, fell off like Sloppy Joe. When I put my first tour, rock the show. Rock the and Hardy True Religion, rock the clothes. Rock the clothes. And that's how we do. San City LV, nigga 702. We hear haters, stop wondering how I'm on the road. You motherfuckers can't stop me now. Motherfuckers can't stop me. I murder bars, rest up, snicker rappers spitting candy bars. In this rap shit, I do my thing. Left jab on the game like Club like Lang. Lang. Who won't run with me? I'm a brick in a booth, y'all have a key. They can't rep Vegas, I'm the best they say. Yeah. The modern day NWA. I'm a beast with a pen drinking X and O. X and o. Fuck Chris, I drink Hennessy, nigga. Now I'm done with the shit. One love to Shakur, got my son of shades on. Christian Dior. Christian.